lesson, we're going to start with a riddle. I'm sometimes seen on a hook, but I'm not a co. I have a tail, but I'm not a dog. I have scales, but I don't weigh things. You can eat me with chips, but I'm not salsa. Sometimes I can be caught in a net, but I'm not a butterfly. I live in the water, but I'm not a frog. What am I? Well, my name is Hannah, and I'm an environmental educator at the Central Wisconsin Environmental Station. After hearing that riddle, if you guessed fish, you were correct. And that's what today's nature studies will be about. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Wow, there are so many different types of fish down here. All shapes and sizes. How cool. I think I know some of them but I should probably review all the parts of a fish so I know I'm identifying the right one. So for this next activity, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna draw and label a basic fish to learn all the parts, and then we're gonna practice some fish identification. So let's get started. Start off with a blank sheet of paper and a writing utensil. Try to follow along with the drawing in the video the best you can, but remember that every fish is different and it does not need to look exactly like this fish. Each fish is unique, and while they do have a lot of the same anatomical features, they don't all do the same thing in the water, so they don't all need the same fins or types of gills. Once you've put some details onto your fish, begin drawing lines from the places that I have lines on in the video, because we will be labeling each feature here shortly. Once you have all of the lines drawn from the features on the fish, like the video shows, feel free to pause the video and get ready for the word bank to come up onto the screen as we will begin labeling each part of the fish to learn about the anatomy. So I hope you all have your fish drawn out and if you don't, feel free to pause the video and finish your fish. And even if it doesn't quite look like a fish, as long as you know what it is, that's all that matters. So now that we have it drawn out, let's think, how can we identify a fish? Hmm, there's a lot of factors that go into identifying a fish that are super, super helpful to all of us. So when you first see a fish, think about the size of it. Is it small? Is it really, really big? Does it have any distinct spots or stripes on it? What type of mouth does it have? And does it have teeth? Where are you? Are you on a stream or a lake or a really big river? And then you can think even bigger than that. Are you in Wisconsin, Arizona? By thinking about all of those things, you're really helping yourself narrow down the species. Even the smallest things that you think might not matter will truly help you a lot when you're trying to identify a fish. So the first feature on the fish we're gonna talk about is the mouth and probably one of the most important features that fish have because without a mouth, how would they eat and how would they survive? So there are three types of mouths. There is a superior mouth, which is sort of like a V pointed up at the sky off of the face. There's the terminal mouth that's straight off of the face where the lower and upper jaw is the same length. And then there's the inferior mouth, which is sort of like that V again, but pointed down towards the ground. So the fish that have the superior mouth typically eat insects or smaller fish that hang out at the top of the water column. The terminal mouth, a lot of fish can eat a lot of different other fish. Uh, a lot of predators have this type of mouth, but they typically have teeth like the muskie or the walleye. They have a lot of teeth, a lot of sharp teeth. They typically prey on fish and fish only, while other fish will eat insects or even vegetation sometimes. And thirdly, the inferior mouth, that is pointed towards the ground. So that's a lot of fish that are suckers or catfish. will just swim along the bottom, hang out down there and suck up any debris or anything off of the ground they wanna eat. Some catfish also have the barbels that are like whiskers, hence catfish. They have whiskers coming off of their face that they can use to feel around the bottom to help them find food. So go ahead and label mouth. And if you drew a certain type of mouth, feel free to label that as well. 
So the next feature we're going to talk about are the eyes. So the eyes are very similar to those of mammals or birds, but their lens may be a little bit more spherical. So like us, most fish generally have rods and cones, rods being helpful for seeing things in lower light, while cones help with brighter light as well as shapes. So like the mouth, all fish have different eyes, some bigger, some smaller, depending on the predator, um, they might have bigger eyes. And then there's also the rock bass who has bright red eyes. So they can have different color eyes, but for the most part, they generally see all colors and distances and different light. Although some fish do like deeper water where it's darker, just like some fish like up near the surface where it is much, much lighter because of the sun. So let's move on to our next feature and go ahead and fill in eyes on your drawing. Okay, so the next feature we're gonna talk about are the gills, another really important one. So the gills are like our lungs. So as a fish is swimming through water, it'll open and close its mouth to allow water to go through its mouth out its gills. When it goes through its gills, the fish is actually retrieving the oxygen that's within the water and then releasing the carbon dioxide. Just like us, we inhale oxygen and when we exhale, we let out carbon dioxide. So that's exactly what these gills are doing while the fish go through water. So a lot of times you'll see fish open and close their mouth as they're swimming and that's what they're doing. They're working on breathing. Now there are also fish that are filter feeders and they will do the similar thing, but rather than focusing on breathing, they're focusing on inhaling microscopic food. So when they're doing this, those gills are also catching food particles. So it's a super cool way for them to breathe and eat at the same time. Okay, so for the next features, we're actually gonna work on the three fins that are on the lower half of the fish. So the pectoral fin, the pelvic fin, and the anal fin. So the first fin that we talked about was the pectoral fin. Now the pectoral fin is the fin that I think of the most when I think of fish swimming. So the pectoral fin helps it move from left to right and up and down. So it completely controls the direction of the movement and where this fish is going. So the pelvic fin is the fin that helps it balance and keep it upright. So the pectoral fin helps it move around from left to right, up and down, wherever it's going. The pelvic fin helps it stay balanced so it's not rolling around in circles underwater. So these fins, there's one on each side, but like everything else on a fish, they can differ in size and location just a little bit. So the anal fin, unlike the other two, there's only one of them typically sticking straight out and this helps it balance. So it kind of is like the center of gravity for the fish. It just kind of keeps it steady and swimming the way it wants to. So now that we have the lower fins done, let's go ahead and work on the upper fins. But remember that you can pause the video to write in the names of each feature. And if your fish looks a little bit different, that's okay because while this fish has an anal fin, not all fish do, and they can be different shapes and sizes, similar to our upper fins that we're just getting ready to work on. So the next features we are going to talk about are the fins on the upper side of the body. So we have the spiny dorsal fin, which they call it the spiny dorsal fin because of the spines coming up through the fin that are sharp usually, then the soft dorsal fin and the caudal fin, which is the tail. So the spine, spiny dorsal fin and the soft dorsal fin change a lot from fish to fish. So the fish that I drew is pretty similar to a yellow perch or a ring perch. So there's a little bit of a gap. Some fish, it goes from spiny straight over to the soft, like the bluegill, um, the northern pike or the muskie, their bodies are so long and then they just have basically a soft dorsal fin off the back. So each fish can range and these fins are used for motion or turns or quick turns. So like I said, a lot of fish have different types of dorsal fins. The caudal fin is typically the same on fish. It will range in size from fish to fish depending on the size of the fish overall. And the caudal fin is mainly used for going back and forth to swim through the water. 
So the dorsal fin really depends on the type of fish. If it's a predator like a muskie, it doesn't need the spiny dorsal fin like a bluegill because the spiny dorsal fin is also a defense mechanism. I don't know if you've ever caught a fish, a lot of panfish like the bluegill, the sunfish, they'll have the spiny dorsal fin and you have to watch out for that when you're grabbing it because they'll stick it up and you can get stuck in the hand. But big muskies, they don't have that because they don't need that. They have their sharp teeth, not many things try to eat them. So depending on the location is also a huge factor in what type of fins certain fish will have. We are on our last two features of a basic fish. So the first of the two is the peduncle. The peduncle is this area between the larger portion of the body and the caudal fin. So the peduncle helps with the motor skills of the fish. There are muscles and ligaments in there that help it move its caudal fin in order to swim around. And lastly is the lateral line. So if you look closely, you can see some little lines on my drawing to help with details. Now you might think that not every fish has a lateral line down the side. And while some fish do have stripes vertically or dots, they all have a lateral line of some sort. Now the lateral line helps detect vibrations and movements in the water. So this actually helps orientate the fish while they're swimming. So they can kind of sense where they are, what they're close to and where they're going. So it really helps them pay attention to where they're going in the water, whether it's clear or dark, dirty water. So now feel free to pause the video and look at the word bank and fill in any spots you have left. And always remember that even though we did do this drawing of the basic features, of this particular fish. Every fish is different. A lot of their fins are placed differently. They use their eyes for different things. So these are very basic features of a basic fish, but you will run into other fish in your life that look a little bit different. So always feel free to investigate a little bit and learn a little bit more about a different fish. So now that we've identified all of the main features on a fish and have talked about how we can identify them by looking at their fins or their eyes or their mouth, Let's look at the little bit bigger picture and think about other ways we can identify fish. So think about that for a minute. What other ways can we use to identify fish? Hmm. While you're thinking about that, think about where you've caught a fish. Was it in a big open area? Was it on a stream? Maybe on a lake? Was it in deep water or shallow water? Was it clean water or was it pretty clear, healthy water? Hmm, where have you caught fish? Well, while you can identify a fish just by looking at it, you can also identify a fish by the location that you caught it at. So whether it's a pond, stream, lake, whatever it is, that is very, very helpful and identifying a fish. So let's dive a little further in and talk about those a little bit more. So here we are at Lake Superior up in Bayfield, Wisconsin. Lake Superior is home to many, many fish. It's a huge, huge, great lake and many different fish species can live here because it provides many different types of habitats. So bluegill, crappie, walleye, catfish, all sorts of fish can live here because it is such a big lake. So let's check out another location. So here we are at Dragonfly Pond up in Tomahawk, Wisconsin. Now this isn't a very big pond, so it can't be home to many fish. And of those fish, they typically don't prey on one another because that'll lead to competition. See, predator fish will very quickly wipe out the population of smaller fish that they like to feed on. So in a pond like this, it's better to have smaller fish that won't eat one another as often because then the populations are able to maintain much, much better. Let's check out another location. Now here we are at our final location, the Mississippi River. What kind of fish do you think would live here? Do you think fish that live here are maybe different from the fish that would live in a pond or a lake? Hmm. Why might 
there'd be some different fish that would live in a river versus a pond or a lake. Well, the main difference between a river and a lake is the current. Some fish need a current where they live because they need that water moving because the more the water moves, the more oxygen is in the water. So some fish can live super deep down in lakes or rivers where there's less oxygen in the summertime, while others can't do that. They need really, really high oxygen. So there are a lot of species that can live in both locations, but not all species can. Okay, so now that we've learned a little bit about fish identification, we're gonna put our skills to the test. So in the upper left-hand corner, we have a walleye. In the upper right-hand corner, we have a yellow perch, also known as the ring perch. And then down below, we have the catfish. So the first question is, which one of these fish has a subterminal mouth? So feel free to refer back to the drawing that you did earlier and think about which fish has a subterminal mouth. The catfish, the catfish has the subterminal mouth. If you look at the mouth, you'll see that the upper jaw or lip hangs out further than the lower jaw, making it a subterminal mouth. So up above, we have the muskelunge or the musky, as some people call it. In the lower left-hand corner, we have a pumpkin seed sunfish. There are a lot of different species under the sunfish title, but this specific one is the pumpkin seed. And in the lower right, we have the walleye. Which one of these fish has a white spot on its caudal fin? So look back at your drawing and think about which fin is the caudal fin and which one has the white spot on it. And that would be the walleye. If you look back at its tail or the caudal fin, it has a large white spot down below in the lower part. And that is a really easy way to identify the walleye because sometimes if it's in the same area as the ring perch, people can get those two species confused with one another. But if you look at that caudal fin and look for that white spot, you'll be able to know that it's a walleye. Okay, so on our final question, we have the brook trout up above. We have the northern pike in the lower left-hand corner and the largemouth bass in the lower right-hand corner. Now, which one of these fish has very distinct spots along the lateral line? Very distinct, very bright. This one's a little bit tough because all three of these fish have a lateral line that's very distinctive, but, but which one has really bright spots? That would be the brook trout. The brook trout is one of the brightest fish in our waterways. And it has very distinct spots going down the side that are like red and have a blue outline. So now that we've all learned a little bit more about fish and how to identify them, I want you all to know that it is really important that we can identify fish. Whether it's so you know you're catching the right one and the right amount if you're fishing in the summer, to knowing that the water quality is good and healthy. For example, the brook trout that we identified is a huge indicator species, meaning that by seeing it in one of our streams, we know that the water is healthy because this fish needs healthy, clean water to live in. So when we start seeing less and less of these brook trout, it probably means that our water is unhealthy and something is going into it that shouldn't be going into it. So when you're out fishing, or working with fish, maybe studying fish, think about the fish that you're seeing, where you're seeing them, and why they might be there. Is it a lake or a stream? Is it deep water or shallow water? Fish are everywhere, and they're really, really important to maintaining a healthy ecosystems in our lakes and rivers near us. So to finish up today, we're gonna to do a really short quiz just to review everything that we've learned. So our first question is going to be, what is an indicator species? A, a type of fish, B, a species that indicates healthy water, or C, a fish sampling technique. So the answer is B, a species that indicates healthy water is known as an indicator species. The next question is, 
Where is the pectoral fin located on the fish? Is it on the top of the fish, the bottom, or the side? The correct answer is C. The pectoral fin is on the side of the fish. Our next question is, what is the main difference between cold water and warm water fish? A, certain fish like the sunshine down south, B, larger abundance of food in warm water, or C, cold water fish need more oxygen. The answer is C, cold water fish need more oxygen. And so for our final question, it's going to be a bonus question. What is the state fish of Wisconsin? A, the bluegill, B, the muscalunge or the muskie, C, the walleye, or D, the sturgeon? So the answer is B, the muscalunge or the muskie is the state fish of Wisconsin. Well, I don't know about you, but it's starting to get cold down here and it's kind of getting hard to breathe. So I think I'm going to go ahead and hop back out of the water. So I'll see you up there. Thank you all for diving into the cold, cold water with me on this cold day. I hope you all enjoyed learning a little more about fish and their place in our ecosystems. See you next time.